Good morning from Wilderness Lodge. It's another beautiful morning here at Walt Disney World. I know you can't really see because the windows are a little bit foggy, but it's also checkout day. And you know what that means. That means we need to do a review. So let's sit down here for a little bit and talk about Wilderness Lodge, both as a resort and let's talk about this room and our experience. First things first, Wilderness Lodge is a deluxe resort, which means it's one of the most expensive resorts here at Walt Disney World. It also has Disney Vacation Club villas available as well as cabins. So there are a lot of different accommodation types at this resort and they're gonna come at a number of different price points, but on the higher end for Walt Disney World. This resort is also a Magic Kingdom area resort, which means it's going to be very close to Magic Kingdom. However, it's important to keep in mind that this isn't the type of resort that's going to give you super easy access to Magic Kingdom, at least not in comparison to some other Magic Kingdom resorts. So I think when a lot of people think of the Magic Kingdom resorts, the Magic Kingdom area resorts, they think of the contemporary Polynesian Grand Floridian, they think of the monorail. And while this resort is right there, it is right in that area it is right off of the monorail it doesn't have access to the monorail so the ease of getting to magic kingdom is not quite there for this resort although you do have additional options for getting to magic kingdom beyond a bus we'll talk about that here in a bit though this resort is absolutely gorgeous it is heavily themed to the american west so you're going to see references to the grand canyon and native americans native american art it's absolutely gorgeous in this resort and it's so huge even though the resort itself isn't massive the scale of the resort just feels massive it feels as great as the Grand Canyon as you walk into that lobby. It also feels like you're walking into a lodge, Wilderness Lodge, it's right in the name. So it's very dark and warm and it just, it's an amazing experience just walking into that lobby. I can't say it enough. As far as the size of this resort's footprint, it's a little bit difficult to describe, mainly because this resort is kind of in three sections, two of which are in the center. So we have Boulder Ridge, Wilderness Lodge, and Copper Creek. Those are the three sections that kind of sit at the center of the resort. And then it sprawls out on either side with cabins. And while some of these cabins are rather close to that center point, some are kind of far out there. And so if you're going to be thinking about staying in one of those cabins, you want to keep that in mind that you will probably be kind of far away from all of the action that takes place in the center of the resort. So that's going to be the pools, it's going to be the activities, the dining, and of course the transportation. Speaking of transportation, this resort has two transportation options available to you. Of course those transportation options include taking a bus, so you can catch that bus just outside the lobby. That bus will take you to the theme parks as well as Disney Springs. There's also a boat that will take you directly to Magic Kingdom as well. So you do have a different form of transportation that will get you right to Magic Kingdom. It's an interesting form of transportation, not just your standard bus. Now on the information that you are given when you check in, it does say that to get to Magic Kingdom, you're going to take the boat. However, we did see that buses are sometimes offered to Magic Kingdom as well. I'm not entirely sure if that's a consistent thing, if there's always a bus going to Magic Kingdom or if it's just during peak times or when the boat isn't running. So it's important to ask about that when you check in, just to ensure that you're not walking to the wrong end of the resort in order to catch transportation and realize you have to walk back to a different part of the resort. Of course, like I said, the bus transportation is going to be out front of the lobby, but the boat transportation is going to be kind of diagonal across the resort over by the water. So they aren't quite next to each other, although it's not as far as it might seem, especially when you're looking at the map initially. In fact, you could probably say that for this entire resort. While it does look huge on a map, I feel like that's always the case. It doesn't take as long as you would think to walk from one end to the other, at least in those center portions of the resort. I still do think that it is quite the walk, at least a quarter mile one way to the end of where the cabins are, at least in one direction. We saw that when looking at one of the running trail maps. So again, there are some areas of the resort that are 
quite off in the distance and there is no internal transportation. So if you're gonna be staying in one of those cabins, just plan on walking. Now, aside from the nuts and bolts of this resort, the theme is just unbelievable. Like I mentioned, it's gorgeous in this resort and there's a lot to see and there's actually a lot to do here as well. Sure, there's all those things that you would expect from a standard Walt Disney World Resort hotel. So there are daily activities, there are crafts, movies on the lawn, stuff like that. But there's also so much more at this resort. There are boat rentals, which by the way, I'm not sure are currently available. So make sure to call ahead if that's something you're interested in. But there's also a lot to just do while you wander. And that makes this an amazing resort for just enjoying. I know there are a lot of people out there who like to come to Walt Disney World and go, 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 go. But if you're looking for a resort that's a little bit more laid back, and is just an experience in and of itself, this is a place that I would recommend because there's so much to see and do. There are a lot of displays and things to see wandering through the resort. There's lots of artwork and information, so much to see, and there's so much to do. There's so many places to just sit and relax. This resort has multiple fireplaces with lots of chairs so that you can sit and just enjoy your time with family around a fire, something that we don't always have the option of doing just in day-to-day -day life. There's also a lot of comfortable chairs, not only in the lobby, but on the floors surrounding the lobby. So like I said, it's a very tall, big open space and it just feels like a log cabin with different furniture that you can sit and enjoy, whether you're in the lobby or on one of the floors up above. It's absolutely gorgeous. There are outdoor areas to sit, there are indoor areas to sit. So you can really just enjoy being in this amazing amazing space and let your eyes wander and there is so much to see. And there are more places to sit out and relax that are outside. So you don't have to just be in the building, although it's wonderful to be in the building because it's nice and cool with the air conditioning, even around the fireplaces. But there are plenty of places outside to wander around. There's a geyser that goes off on the hour. There are pools. There are plenty of tables with lots of shade. And there are some seating areas by the lake. So it's beautiful. It's just an absolutely gorgeous resort. No matter where you want to wander off to and sit down, plenty of places to do just that. The resort also has multiple dining options available. So there is the Roaring Fork, which is the quick service. And then there are multiple table service options available, including a bar and grill, an all you can eat restaurant, and character dining. So there are a lot of different options available. Some of them are on the more expensive side, like the character dining over at artist point but if you're looking for a more affordable option the grab and go options or quick service options at roaring fork are fantastic we ate there multiple times during our stay and it was just so good i would definitely recommend checking that out even though it is counter service it isn't table service you're not going to have that environment of sitting at a table and having a waiter and whatnot don't expect to be unimpressed by the food there are some really amazing options available and we definitely recommend that you try them out speaking of food russ is actually on his way back to the room now with our breakfast and i am so excited for that because these breakfast options look amazing at this resort now let's talk a little bit about about the room. Of course, if you wanna see the room in detail, you can do that by checking out our room tour, but this is a deluxe studio. It is a Disney Vacation Club room. And so it's a little bit different from a standard deluxe hotel room. It's a little bit bigger. It does have some features that you wouldn't get out of a standard hotel room, mainly a kitchenette that includes a full-size coffee maker, a microwave, a fridge, and just a little bit of extra space, including an additional sink where you can wash dishes and whatnot. All right, we need to do a quick, quick intermission for our regularly scheduled review. Breakfast got here and I told you it was huge. Look at that. These are like the Gaston style cinnamon rolls. And look at this. <laughs> I don't think you can see. Look at look at how big that is. It's the size of oh an actual goodness. bear claw. All right, we're gonna eat and then we'll talk more about the room. All right, coffee in hand. That breakfast was absolutely amazing. But like I said, the food at Roaring Fork is just so good. In fact, that bear claw, we barely scratched the surface of that thing. <laughs> We'll be eating that one, definitely. 
for the next couple days. But anyway, so let's get back to talking about this room. So like I said, this is a Disney Vacation Club villa. It is the deluxe studio, and that means it has some amenities that you won't expect from other rooms, like, for example, a kitchenette. It also does have some comforts of home, which make this kind of like a studio apartment. And that's really great for a resort like this, where you can just enjoy being here. So we do have a table where we can sit and eat. There's also another like coffee table that extends up. So if you have four people staying in this room, which I think is the max capacity for this room, everyone has a place to sit down and eat comfortably. You don't have to go sit outside at one of the tables, although it's really nice out there, but you don't have to. You can bring your food back to your room. You can eat it at the table. You can store your leftovers in the fridge, warm them up in the microwave. There's also some cutlery in here as well as paper plates and bowls. So you have everything that you need right here. As far as room size, I'm not sure of the actual square footage of this room and how that compares to other rooms. But generally when I talk about how a room feels in terms of size, it's just how it feels with us moving around and the furniture that's in that room. This room, I feel like it it gives you the impression that it's a little bit tight, even though it is overall a pretty good sized room. The entryway is kind of tight, kind of narrow. The closet in this room is very small by comparison. This room also has a walk-in shower, which you do get the option to choose if you want a walk-in shower or not. We opted for the walk-in shower because I love the rainfall showers and they do have one in this room. But that said, the bathroom space does feel tight as well, just because of the way that the door swings and where the toilet sits. It's just a little awkward to move around that space. That said, aside from those tight spaces, the room itself is pretty good size, especially if it's just two of you staying in here. I do think that if you have four people in this room, it's gonna be very tight just because of the setup and just how small things like the closet are. Now you do have the ability to put your luggage under the bed, for example, because this is a bed that's on a platform, but there's not a whole lot of space to tuck other things away, especially if you're coming with a stroller or an ECV. This room also has a pull-out sofa versus a Murphy bed, and that can be a little bit of extra work if you are gonna be sleeping on that sofa. Again, the room can feel a little bit tight, even without that sofa pulled out, if you do have something extra in the room set aside. So it's something that I think you're gonna to have to pull out and then put away every day, very similar to a Murphy bed. And that means a little bit of extra work if you are gonna stay in this room with four people. In terms of space alongside the bed, which we always look at, there's plenty of room on either side of the bed, which is really great. Nice big nightstands on either side. So even if you have mobility issues, you don't wanna be in a tight space to get in and out of the bed. You don't have to worry about that. The sleeper sofa is a little bit of a different situation. There is plenty of space on one side that's kind of tight up against those sliding doors out to the balcony on the other. Again, just something that we noticed, but it's not going to be a problem for everybody. Aside from the small closet, there are plenty of places to tuck your things away. So we do have this dresser with lots of big drawers, plenty of space to put your clothes in there. And there are plenty of spaces in that kitchenette area to tuck away snacks and other necessities that you've brought with you. Same can be said for the nightstands. There's plenty of space in either nightstand to tuck away clothes. Honestly, you could probably consider them a small bureau on either side of the bed. And that's great, especially with a room of this size that does feel a little bit tighter because things can be out of sight, out of mind, but there are a lot of places to tuck things away and you don't wanna forget that. So make sure you're always checking all of those drawers and whatnot before you take off. We do like that there are laminate floors in this room. We also like that there's this area rug underneath that sleeper sofa in that living area, it makes the room a little bit cozier and I feel like it makes things a little bit quieter. You don't hear as much noise in this room as you would if there was no carpet there. And I also noticed other things that help keep the room a little bit quieter. For example, soft close hinges on 
different cabinets and doors in this room. So that's nice. And honestly, we didn't notice that it was loud. You don't hear any banging, not a ton of it at least. Although that's not to say that it's perfectly quiet in here. You can hear a little bit of noise from out in the hallway, although it's not too much. We did notice that since this is a lock off, we do have a door that can open up into the room alongside of us, we did hear quite a bit of noise through that door. This is not the first time that we've experienced this. We have experienced this before at Old Key West, and this was very similar, but fortunately we had a family right on the other side of the door that wasn't too loud, though we could clearly hear them speaking through that door. So. That's something to take note of. I'm not sure if this resort has options for one bedroom villas that are not a lock off, but that's something that you might wanna take a look at and inquire about if you wanna make sure that you can keep your privacy. Speaking of privacy, I think the only other thing to note in this room is that the balconies didn't feel all that private. Now, of course, they're not necessarily going to be private. You're sharing that space with other people, but the dividers between the balconies did have pretty large gaps. It's important to keep that in mind because you might be sharing that space with people in the neighboring room. So that's something to be aware of, something to keep in mind if you're planning on staying in this resort and you do wanna spend a lot of time out on the balcony. We spent some time out there last night and it was actually really nice, although it was kind of buggy, not just gnats, but actually a lot of mosquitoes as well. So I do think that's something to take into consideration. I know there are some of you out there who are like, well, it's Wilderness Lodge, you're kind of in the woods, so you'd expect bugs. But a lot of times people don't expect there to be bugs and mosquitoes at Walt Disney World because Disney does a lot to kind of mitigate that. If you're gonna be coming to this resort, staying at this resort, spending a lot of time outside, I do recommend bringing bug spray. I think it'll be worth the while. Beyond that, there's really not much else to say about this room. We did very much enjoy it. We didn't have anything to really gripe about. There is definitely some wear and tear in this room, but that's to be expected. I think it's a little surprising some areas that had wear and tear, like there were some big gouges in the mini fridge that we noticed. So while we're not necessarily surprised by wear and tear, it did catch our eye eventually. We were like, wow, I'm kind of surprised that that's still here because it looks really rough. That said, it didn't really impact the room at all in terms of how the refrigerator functioned or anything like that. It was just aesthetic. There is something that I do think is interesting though, especially if you're a little bit wobbly on your feet and that is the edges of the bed. So this is a platform bed and it does have a wooden platform that I feel like kind of blends in with the floor a little bit and there are some pointy edges. So if you have little ones or if you're just someone who wanders kind of quickly through your room, you wanna be aware of that, you know? It might bang your shins up a little bit. Fortunately, we, well, I guess, knock on wood, we haven't banged our shins on the bed yet, but there's still time. <laughs> Another thing that's kind of notable, random, but very notable, is that the couch is incredibly comfortable, especially for a pullout couch. So we've been spending a lot of time sitting there enjoying some television and we, we have no problems with this couch. It's super comfy. We enjoyed sitting on it. I definitely think that it's a great piece of furniture. So often pullout couches feel just not quite right. This one felt great. We really loved it. And overall, that is how we feel about this entire resort. We really loved it. We think that it's a great option, although the downsides are that it's kind of out of the way. In fact, Russ was just mentioning something to me. He had to head out earlier this morning, and when he came back, he told me that there's a lot of traffic leaving this resort headed to Magic Kingdom because we're right in that area, as I mentioned. And so, that's kind of notable if you're looking to go to Magic Kingdom, you're thinking about taking the bus to Magic Kingdom, which again, may or may not be available all the time. There's a lot of traffic heading that direction. And so it might be more efficient to actually take the boat 
but that's something that of course will vary depending on the season and how busy it is on any particular day. So that's just something to be aware of and something to just keep an eye out for if you're gonna be staying here. But the downsides of this resort are mainly that it's out of the way despite being right in the middle of the action. So I do think that that's worth mentioning. It's worth keeping in mind if you're choosing this resort, though, if you're looking for a place to stay that's going to be just an overall amazing environment and kind of a vacation in and of itself, I think that this is a great option. Of course, we would love to know what you think, so tell us all about it in the comments down below. Have you ever stayed here? Would you ever consider staying here? If you've watched our other videos where we wander around the resort and look at the room, what are some of the things that you like and dislike? Tell us all about it in a comment. Of course, don't forget to hit that thumbs up and subscribe so you don't miss any of our other videos about this resort or any other resort that we stay at. But I think that does it for Wilderness Lodge. We had such a great time and we hope you had a great time wandering around with us and checking this place out. But now it's time to finish this coffee and make our way out. So thanks so much for hanging out with us. We had a great time and we hope you did too. And we look forward to seeing you in the next one. Bye.